This was supposed to be here yesterday, but nothing came yesterday. I don't know whether they were on strike or what, but... Okay, it's here today, so here's the unboxing. Even have a proper knife this time, rather than grabbing a random pair of scissors or screwdriver or something. As is typical with Amazon these days, it's a little box inside a much bigger box and no paper or anything to stop it from rattling around inside there. There's no seal, so I'll just open it right up. The model is a BT039, no, sorry, BT309A. Let's get the numbers right. A little remote controller and a user guide. Looks like it may be in English and Chinese. I hope there's English. Although, when have I ever read user guides? Okay, it's English that you need a magnifying glass to be able to figure out. Built in player volume reduction function keys. Okay, it's Chinglish. It is an amplifier for my speakers, the big ones I have, because I'm running them off a little CD player which has one watt maximum output. This has 800 watt! Actually, more likely it's probably 30 to 40 watts. 800 is the maximum it can do. At a peak lasting about maybe, I don't know, a millisecond or something. Oh, and it's a lie anyway, it's 400 twice because it's stereo, so... Here are two auxiliary inputs. I chose this one over the other ones I'd bookmarked because it had two inputs, which I thought was going to be useful. I can hook up um, maybe one of my little ESP32 radios on that. An antenna for the internal FM radio. Speaker connections. Um, a connection there for a car. It was supposed to have, I think, a thingy for plugging into a car, but... Alright, that's not a big deal. It's center positive as normal. The one I'm going to be using, a connection for the mains. Not quite sure what that is. I hope that's not their idea of a Bluetooth antenna. And on the front, the obligatory power button. USB, it's not USB-C, come on. SD card. So it can play MP3s off of uh, Flash Media. Microphone volume and echo for the two microphone inputs there, which I'm just not going to use because I sound like a Muppet giving birth when I sing. Bass, treble and volume. And then some buttons to control what mode it's actually in. It supports, as I said, the SD, the USB, the two auxiliary inputs and Bluetooth. So there's the unboxing. Now to hook the system up and see how it behaves. And in testing, I noticed that the speakers that say on the back, they are 8 ohm, are actually 4 ohm. 
The reason for the multimeter is to tie a little knot into the positive side so that I can be certain to hook the speakers up with the correct polarity. So there's the positive there, negative, negative. And finally, the positive there. All right, speakers are hooked up. Let's do this. I don't have anything connected to the line input at the moment, so let's try the next mode, which is radio. You hear it's quite distorted. 7-6, donc Clara Burel éliminée. That noise there, you can hear quite a bit of that on the radio, which I suppose may be because of the transformer in there. It's worth pointing out that uh, in the house, I receive absolutely nothing. Connecting to the device is fairly simple. has a better range outside than in the living room where I can only manage about three and a half to four meters part of the problem I would imagine is that the antenna is this Playback from a USB key works as well. You can't hear what's going on because unfortunately it's copyrighted music and YouTube might uh, get a bit stressy about that. But it sounds okay. With the remote controller there's actually equalizer types that can be brought in for MP3 playback. It doesn't work for Bluetooth, but on the other hand you have the bass and the treble adjustment there. The microphone and the echo I'm not using at all. I've not cranked this up to see how loud it can go. I don't want to risk damaging speakers. Suffice to say that in the living room about there is a reasonable volume to listen to. It has fairly powerful bass. You'll notice I haven't put it all the way onto full so with the four on speakers it could go quite a lot louder but I don't need that that level of loudness now since this is me we're talking about this next part is almost obligatory there's only three screws around the back so it's fairly simple to get into right well the first thing we can notice, I can zoom the camera in a little bit and point it up, is that while it claims to have, oh, need to pull the flex through. while it claims to have two analog inputs, 
marked here on the board as CD and DVD, they are actually connected together. There's no way to select between them, so you can only have one having input at the same time. It comes through here to the analog right and analog left. The audio and the power goes through this cable here to a controller board. The controller board has a dinky little microchip, which I don't know if I can zoom in so you can see it. There it is in the middle just there. I did read off the part number and it doesn't exist. It's one of those sort of uh, mass produced in China gadgets. You'll notice that it has a proper printed track Bluetooth antenna to which a wire has been soldered, which comes all the way through here, all the way through the back, and is that, which could explain why the Bluetooth reception is a bit mediocre. This controls all of the audio inputs and switches between them. It also handles the Bluetooth, the USB, and the SD card reading. Probably also handles the radio. Yep, that connection there is to the radio antenna. The audio comes out of there and goes down to this, which handles the microphone inputs and also all of the audio. You can see the main volume there. Then that is for the treble, then the bass. I'd imagine one of these chips you can see there is some sort of preamp, probably for the microphone. I'm not sure whether the echo is handled by the board down here, by the board down here, or whether it goes up through the processor. I'd imagine it's probably done in analog. Then the output comes back through to the back of the board to the amplifier, which is this thing and a big heatsink on it as well. And it goes through there to the speaker outputs. That's about it. The only other thing of note is here is the power supply. It can accept a 14 volt there it says coming through the transformer or through a little connection at the back here, 12 volt from a car battery. That is stepped down to if we look at this gadget here. It's a voltage regulator that steps it down to 5 volt for all of the circuitry inside. There is a 3 amp fuse here inside that, and it's interesting to note that the neutral pin, which you can see some bare wire there, that's very well assembled. The neutral is where the switch is. The live goes straight to the transformer. Although, having said that, it's a French plug, so there isn't really any concept of live and neutral, to be honest. And that's what's inside. Right, the cons. Firstly, probably due in large part to this, Bluetooth reception is fairly mediocre when it comes to being inside the house. As I said, it doesn't manage... Just turn it down a little bit. It doesn't manage to um, take my normal phone from one end of the living room to the other. So that has to be taken into account. Secondly, radio reception inside the building is also terrible. And it's, to be honest, not that good outside either. There's a lot of distortion and noise in it. And if you happen to be dumb enough to believe the publicity where this thing screams it outputs 800 watts, that's complete rubbish. It might manage that for maybe a microsecond maximum peak output. In reality, it's about 60 watts, which is a great improvement over my CD player that I had before that managed one watt output. As I said, it sounds perfectly good at about third volume.
and that's even louder than my CD player managed at maximum volume, so it's, it's a benefit. Other benefits, the pros of this, with Amazon Prime delivery in two days, it was, I think, 32 euros all in. It's really cheap, and it does the job. I'm not an audiophile, so I'm not going to say that I need um, the greatest sound. This is a great improvement with those speakers there of what I had before. That I can actually enjoy music now without having to have headphones on to listen to the bass. You'll notice, as I said, I haven't put the bass on full because it, 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 blah, blah, blah. it is actually quite a powerful bass. And, well, basically it's cheap and cheerful and gets the job done. I should add that before Alison kindly gave me the big speakers, for which I'm very grateful, what I used to listen to was that. There is utterly no meaningful comparison.